Hi, I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, and this is episode 24. Um, real quick update on the knee because I get so many PMs about it, and I want to thank everybody who has commented and PM'd and sent so many um, wonderful thoughts and um, healing hopes for my knee. Um, I am doing much better. I have very little pain. They kind of work me good during uh, physical therapy which is going really really good so I'm hoping after this week to only have one more week I'm supposed to have two but I'm gonna try to talk him out of it my husband will be on vacation and while we're not going anywhere per se we thought you know kinda to do a few more family things and my physical therapy is always in mornings and it just kinda cuts into the day so thank you all so much for all of the care and concern and just going out of your way to, you know, let me know you're thinking of me. So, to get down to business, um, the July-August Knit Along is going on, and we've had so many amazing entries. Um, I wanted to go through the prizes real quick, just to remind you, and also a huge thank you to everybody who donated prizes you make this knit along um, even more possible and even more fun. So a huge thank you. Um, the first prize is from Dancing Dog Dye Works. It is a skein of um, jelly beans worsted weight. And I have said before, in case if you're a first time viewer, um, which hello to all the new <laughs> viewers. I kind of forget to do that sometimes. And a big welcome to all the returning ones, but I am not, I'm not like the best bow maker and whatnot. Michelle packages her skeins up so lovely. I didn't want to open it up and then the winner get it and it'd be wonky looking. So I actually found, because I kept saying I don't have any jelly beans, but I do. I have a little um, sample size one that I made into a hexi puff. So it's kind of like all the colors of the rainbow plus pink. So, I don't know if it'll focus really good and show you all the colors, but that's what it looks like. So, like I said, it's in worsted weight. You get a full skein, which is approximately 218 yards, and it'll be the first prize. And then the prizes, I'm just going to give out in order that I got them. So, the second prize will be this really adorable strawberry shortcake box bag. Had it kind of collapsed in the pile here. Um, it was made by Melissa who's mostly munchies and she makes the bags with the zippers for the silver pumpkin. So you get a box bag and a matching notions pouch. The next prize is from um, 716 Knit. It is their 716 Strong which is a worsted weight and it is in the pre-birthday spanking colorway which is um, pops of like bright bubblegum pinks and really bright sunshiny yellows and it kind of mixes together to make oranges and it is soft and squishy. I ordered a skein that you saw a few weeks ago and I'm kind of trying to decide what I want mine to be. I'm like I kind of have an idea but at the same time I kind of want to make it for one of my samples. So I'm still thinking, but you'll see it soon, I'm sure, knit it up. And then you also get a little stitch marker. So, 716, thank you so much, Jen. Uh, next we have um, a copy of the Fruit Loops Gang Pattern from Susan Claudino, who is uh, No Knit Sherlock on Ravelry. Let's see if I can get pictures of the little things. They're little fruity guys. They're adorable. So she's going to donate a pattern. And then we have um, pattern guides from Anders Mill. So you have a chance to win five fabulous prizes. So make sure you keep entering. Remember the rules of the knit along is it's any pattern designed by me. Um, you can enter as many toys as you want. Make sure um, they have to be knitted between July 1st and August 29th when I close the thread at noon and 
What else? Um, you can, like I said, you can post as many as you want. Just make sure you put, give each one an individual post. Um, pictures only. There is a chatter thread if you have any questions about any of the patterns. Um, also, if you just want to show off what you do, you know, I'd love to be able to comment and other people to comment on what you do. So if you post the picture in both threads, then we can chatter about one and then be entered for the other. Um... Each week I'm featuring a different pattern of mine to show you, and this week I picked Liam, the lanky robot. I love him. I love his dangly little arms and legs, and I don't put anything in the antennas to make them to stay up because I kind of like them floppy. That's just me. But this week I really wanted to show you the difference when you use, this is a worsted weight, I use Knit Picks, Will of the Andes Worsted. He makes a nice little toy, and I am anxiously awaiting Ravel... Revelenix, um, because I need to whip up two of these, like, really fast. So, but I want to enter them into the Knittables, um, Revelenic team for the Toy Toss. Uh, but I want to show you, this is worsted weight, and this is a Liam in bulky weight. The Wool of the Andes bulky. So you can see, just changing the yarn choice, I mean, let's see, let's make them even. I mean, this one's quite bigger. So, you can use any weight of yarn with any of my patterns. I normally always try to show them in worsted weight because it's my favorite toy making weight. Because um, I like to make them so they're at least kind of huggable. I'm not really into teeny tiny toys. They're fun and all, but my favorites are when they can be huggable. Someday I'm going to make an owl puff out of like super bulky yarn or something. and It'll be awesome. <laughs> So, like I said, I just wanted to show in comparison, you know, just a, you know, size change. I love the size of this one. He'll be mine forever. I'm never, he's mine. <laughs> he's never going to be gifted. As I do gift my samples often. Let's see. And then I just wanted to throw out there, I was thinking, because I am ready for fall. It is so hot today. My hair was like out here, so it went back. And I was thinking, I'm ready for fall, so for a September-October knit-along, I was thinking about doing like winter accessories, or fall accessories, you can call them fall, that's okay. Just, um, I was thinking like hats, scarves, mittens, gloves. Kind of that way, by the end of October, it'll be getting into November, where it's starting to get cold and you need hats, gloves, mittens, scarves, gloves. <laughs> um, and they can also be perfect to kind of motivate you to get any holiday knitting done. Because I knit a lot for the holidays and I don't know why. Because <laughs> then it's so much pressure because it's like December and I'm knitting something. So um, I'm just curious. So if you're interested, thinking that's a good idea, kind of, um, you know, let me know. Post a comment in the thread for this show episode, episode 24. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Um, moving on into finished objects. I have finished objects and I'm so excited. Um, I found out I have a new baby cousin on Friday. And this baby was stubborn and wouldn't let us know what it was until she was born. So I was so excited. Uh, my aunt and uncle are not that much older than me. So the fact that I have a cousin who's even younger than my children isn't a isn't a surprise at all. So they this is their third baby, so we were really excited, you know, it's a surprise and um so I wanted I told my aunt, I'm like, well I don't want to just knit you anything and you know, I wanted to wait. So I told her, well as soon as you have the baby I will knit something. So I decided to make a sweater and I went with, it's called In Threes, A Baby Cardigan, the official full title. And look at that. It is so cute. Um, the pattern, I have it here because I wanted to give credit. It's Kelly Herdrich. I said In, in Threes, A Baby Cardigan. It's not giving anything away, it's just details. And I used Cascade 220 Superwash because it calls for worsted weight. And I um, used the needle size recommended, which I'm thinking 
was a, it's a five millimeter. So that's what, an eight? Yeah, an eight. <laughs> I'm picking here. So U.S. size eight. Um, and there's not really a whole lot to say about it, but I, I love it. It's really cute and it's super simple. That's what I needed. I wanted something quick and simple. I'll be honest, I'm not a baby knitter. I really don't want to knit for babies except preemie hats. So this was a big deal for me. I really, I'm really close with my aunt and uncle who had the baby. So, and I know they'd appreciate it. That's the big thing. There are a lot of people, you put a, time, a lot of time and effort into something, you're like, I don't even know if that kid's going to even ever wear it. So, <laughs> I know that this will get worn. And it ended up, it's a zero to six months. And I'm like, holy crap, it looks like a toddler could wear it. And it really, it didn't grow that much because I soaked it. I soaked it in some scentless soak. So it's nice and soft, and I found these really cute, I, well I had them, so they're from my stash, but I got them from Joann's, and they are just plastic clear buttons, but the way, they kind of like little flowers, and it kind of makes them look like they sparkle. So, they are, they are 5 8 inch, uh, 5 8 inch buttons, and this was simple. This was like the easiest, I did this in a day. I knit this on Friday, yeah, on Friday, <laughs> I think, so I got it all done in a day, um, I love this, I would like this in my size, I would like to tell, <laughs> like, adult sweater designers, I'm like, you know, I don't want cables, I don't want cables, I really don't want lace, I want a one piece round yoke top down. I mean, this to me was perfect. I'm like, I would love this in my size. But I am not a clothing, I'm not a garment designer. I don't think I ever will be. I have no desire. So if someone out there is listening who is, grown up size. <laughs> so, oh, and the color is bramble, brambleberry, at least according to Jimmy Bean's wool. I got this yarn when I was in Pittsburgh with my friend, we went on a road trip, and there is the nicest little yarn shop in Pittsburgh called Knit One. Love that place. Huge selection, so many choices, so many color choices, and they were super nice because, you know, we were going in as, like, tourists, and just super nice, awesome, very warm and welcoming, tons of couches. So if you're ever in the Pittsburgh area or you live in the Pittsburgh area and haven't checked out Knit One, please do. Those ladies were awesome. Okay, my next finished object, I am so excited to be done with this, is my color affection. Yay! Look at, it is, it's huge. It's not very, oh, it's not very deep. But it is, it is big. Big, big, big. Um, I followed the directions. I did yarn over at the end of each row between the two knit stitches on the edge. And then on the right side row, I would just drop it. Now, I did not block mine to be straight at all. After watching Wendy of Knit One Heart 2 talk about how she blocked hers, and it was almost too straight, it didn't wrap very good. So mine is very crescent-shaped. I actually blocked it lightly. I kind of let it do what it wanted to do, trying to make sure... I'm getting it all in here. But yeah, it is very crescent shaped and I love it. And I also, it was a fun knit. It was for the most part a quick knit. But when I got to this solid red stripe and there was no more stripes and stuff to keep it interesting, that was kind of like slow torture. So my stripe is not a full two inches. It is like an inch and two thirds because I couldn't take it anymore. But it still looks awesome. Um, let's see. Because I'm like, if you put it just over your shoulders, it like I said, it being crescent shaped, it lays so nice. And it's long. And then I usually prefer to wear mine kind of off to the side. I wish I had a mirror. Or the I had like a screen. I use a flip which has been overheating, so if there's a break in the thing, that's why. 
Um, but I love it. I love it. Like I said, just block it lightly. I let it just be crescent shaped. It really, that's what it is. And I didn't want to over block it and just kill it. So I love it. It is in, it is the Color Affection by Vera Valamaki. It is in Cascade Heritage. And I have my extras here. I have, like many others have said, a ton of extras. I was going to rewind these and wind them back up and make them all really nice looking, but I ran out of time. <laughs> so this is the Anise colorway. The green is Primavera. And the red is Christmas Red. So those were my color choices. And I love them. So, so much. And then I gotta get this thing off because it is hot today. And it's soft. I just, I really love this. I'm so glad I decided to, to do it. I do kind of wish it was a little deeper, but I'm like, you know, in my opinion, these were like kind of summery colors. And these would be perfect for like a cool summer evening. Or even into, into fall. The red and the greens into early fall. Let's see. That would move us into works in progress. I've got some works in progress. <laughs> um, I figure first off I will show you. Do, 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 do. The even star. I did five rows since the last time you've seen it. And I had ended, I just finished chart two last time and did the first in, and did the increase row. So after that, there's just some knit rows. So I just got those out of the way and I am now ready to start chart three. So, and I am on a 47 inch around circular needle, size three. I did not gauge, do a gauge swatch for this. So I'm like, it's a shawl. I'm normally pretty spot on with my gauge. I'm going to risk it. So this is the Even Star Pattern by Susan Pandorf. Let's see if I can get it. It's, kind of, it's so hard because it's bunched up on the needle. But I am loving it. It is, it's really not that hard of a knit. You've just got to pay attention. I mean, you're working in the round, so at this point I've run into no purling. It's pretty basic stitches. It's just keeping count. Now normally I have stitch markers like all the way around here, but I haven't started the next chart pattern, so I just recommend. If you're really interested in doing this, I don't think it's that hard, but you'll want to make sure you have lots of stitch markers I use the brass stitch markers from Knit Picks. You get a hundred of them in this little packet for like two dollars. They're not fancy, they're just little round brass rings, perfect for lace, that's what they were made for. And I have the pouch of them, I guess I can show them to you, I think I have them in here. Yep, yep. Mine aren't that brassy looking anymore because I use them like crazy. But they, they, you get this little packet. So, and they're cheap and affordable because you lose them sometimes too. So, since there's a hundred of them, you don't cry over losing a couple. So, that's where the even star is. I would ideally like to do like five rows a week. I would be happy with that. The next, which kind of inspired my idea for the next knit along, is the leaf hat. And it is by Betty Balcom. And here's the picture. It is a free pattern. It is from Cascade Yarns. So it's from their website. Um, the only thing, I don't know if you can see in the picture. It's like this little stem looking thing at the top of the hat. I will not be doing that. <laughs> no stem like that on my hat. Drop my bag. So I'm not very far. I'm using size 8. I don't think it says on this page because it's only first page. I'm using size 8. Um, they call for um, 
circular, a 16 inch circular. I hate <laughs> working on a 16 inch circular for hats because I just feel like it's just too cramped and the needles are like this long, like two inches long. I don't like it. So I decided to go with double points. I'm only like three rows into the pattern. I've done the ribbing and I had to frog this like twice. Like the first time, I don't know, I was off somehow. I don't, I can't even remember the problem I had. So then I cast on again and I started again and somehow I cast on less stitches than I was supposed to. Because I'm thinking, wow, I mean, of course this looks small because it's rib and it'll definitely stretch. But before I'm like, and when I started getting into the pattern, I'm like, why don't, why isn't the pattern lying upright? Like, I don't have enough stitches. And then I reread the thing, and I only cast on 80 stitches, and you're supposed to cast on 88. Oops. So then, <laughs> I gotten through all the ribbing and started the first row of the pattern, and I'm like, this isn't working. <laughs> so I had to do it again, and lots of false starts. So I am really trying to work from my stash. So while I was looking for yarn for that baby sweater, I come across this, and I had also gotten this when I was in Pittsburgh, and I was like, oh, I love this color. It is Cascade 220 Superwash as well, and it is in the burnt orange colorway. So I love this. Love it, love it, love it. And I found the hat pattern on Ravelry and thought, well, that'd be a nice combination because I love to wear hats in the fall. So hopefully next week I'd like to have this done into a hat, but honestly this is only like the second, third, third knit hat I've ever made. Not counting preemie hats because, you know, those are just so simple. But knit hats intimidate me. I've made crochet hats and you start from the top down so you can keep trying it on. This I'm like you kinda gotta hope you're getting it right so it's not too long or too short. So hats, I will admit, hats intimidate me. Isn't that funny? Next, it has been a long time in coming. Oh yeah. And it is in the last two bags you've seen, the ladybugs and the birds, are knitting's my bag. This is my big knitting's my bag. So, I don't know if anyone remembers when I got this bag, what I said it was for. It is for the traveling sweater. So, it is a traveling sweater by A. Karen Alfke. I think that's right. And it, you can purchase it from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. I wish this was a Ravelry download, but you actually have to order this from the Blue Moon Fiber Arts website and it gets mailed snail mail. But I wish like, because I don't want to write on this pattern and I guess I could make a copy. I That's what I need to go do. I need to go to the library and make a photocopy. So I can highlight, because I am making the larger size, being a more busty girl, and a little more on the thick side, I just figured I probably should go for the bigger size. So I would like to like go through and highlight like what I need, but I don't want to write on the original. Does that make sense? So, um, I've had the pattern for two years. Two years. The yarn I've had for almost a year. And I just started on it a couple days ago. See, this is Wednesday. So I started on it Monday evening. I haven't really had a whole lot of time. This is where I'm at. I'm on the first wedge. Not real impressive at this point. But I'm doing it. I've had the pattern for so long and the yarn for so long and my dear friend Sherry, who I know I've mentioned before, I need to try to talk her into co-hosting. I know she's sitting at home going. <laughs> Anyways, she keeps mentioning, she's like, well, you know you need to get that sweater. You spent all that money on the yarn 
and you've had the pattern forever. So I did. I said, I told her when I finish the color affection, I will start the sweater. So I did. I held to my word. I don't know if you can see on here. This is, I actually bought the yarn recommended for the pattern, which I don't do very often. But I thought, well, what the heck? It was a big purchase for me. I normally never buy anything close to sweater quantities of yarn. I'm not a garment knitter. So it is the Blue Moon Fiber Arts Woo Boo, and it is 60% merino, 40% bamboo, and it is approximately 620 yards of a sport weight. And I got the Raven's Croft colorway. Now, they have tons of colorways in the Wubu, especially in grays. I wanted something that would kind of go with everything in my wardrobe, so I didn't want to pick a color. Because my art teacher will tell you, gray is not a color, it is a shade. <laughs> Those are words that like will stick with me forever. So I went with gray, because I thought it'll go with pretty much anything. But mine has is hand-painted. Well, they're all hand-painted. But mine has, like streaks of green in it. I don't know if the camera can even come close to picking that up, but you can see one of the splotches of green right there. There is like a deep, I don't want to call it like a forest green, it's not quite like that. It's a real grayish green and there's kind of like little splotches of like avocado green in here. If I can find one. Not at the moment. But it is gorgeous. There's a really good picture in my stash that captures the green tints in it. And it's very subtle. You know, I mean, sometimes you really have to look at it, and sometimes when the light hits it just right, you can really see it. So, that's it for my traveling sweater at the moment. I mean, it's not going to be a hard knit, but I hate ribbing. And last night, I was at knit night, and it ran really late. <laughs> I was there late, and... I'm working on this. I'm like, oh, ribbing. <laughs> so the Woo Boo is um, a sport weight, and I am knitting it on size 3 needles. And I did do the gauge swatch, and I like they give you two different ways to do the gauge swatch. You can either um, make a knit, uh, ribbed swatch, wash it, block it, and then measure your stitches, or you can do a stock knit swatch and not measure it, not block it and wash it, you just measure it the way it is. And that's what I did. I did the stockinette block. And I was spot on with my gauge. Which was good because I bought these size threes just for this. <laughs> and I really didn't want to have to buy a different size. So, three works in progress. Two of which are quite large. So, I would ideally like the traveling sweater in time for like winter. I don't know if I can do that much ribbing by then. So it might be a year long project as well. Um, let's see. Show notes real quick. We can move into yarny goodness because I have a little. I saw this next yarn on a D stash. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I gotta have it. Like, there was this one moment where I'm like, should I or shouldn't I? But part of the reason I bought this is I really, really want Krabby McHappy Pants from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. And I went to order it, and it's not on their website anymore. There's Krabby McCrabby Pants, which is blues and purples. But I wanted Krabby McHappy Pants, which is like oranges and aquas and I think like some reds. And it is gorgeous. So I was kind of bummed. And then when I saw this, I thought, hmm, that could be an alternative. So it is Into the World. I love their little bags. Love, love, love their little bags. Captain Tight Pants. Now, you might be thinking, why does that sound familiar? And it's because I got the fiber last week. So it is a club colorway, and it has... It has like a deeper blue, which I'm like, mm, but it has aqua, and it has like this like green into some orange, 
and red, and it has some brown in it. So it's not exactly like Krabby McHappy Pants. I would have rather had Krabby, Krabby, <laughs> Krabby McHappy Pants, um, but I thought, well, this will work because I don't think I'll get any Krabby McHappy Pants because I did check the D, I check the D stash every so many days when I think about it just to see if anybody's listed any. Because, you know, now that they changed it on Ravelry, unless if it's in your for sale or trade thing, it says on there, not for sale. So I don't, I used to feel comfortable, like, PMing someone saying, hey, I see you have such and such. You know, are you interested in selling it? And sometimes you get no. Sometimes you don't get an answer at all, which is rude. And then sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, I'm not, I don't have any plans for it. It's just been sitting in my stash. So if somebody has Krabby McHappy Pants, PM me. <laughs> so I think, I keep thinking, I want to make a hitchhiker. The hitchhiker did not honestly interest me until I saw everyone else making them and doing them in more subtle colors. Like I think the original is bright orange. and um, I've seen a lot of bright ones. But I wanted something a little more, I'm ready for fall. I want fall colors. And this says fall to me with the browns and the deep blue and the reds. And so I'm thinking this would make a really awesome hitchhiker. We'll see. We'll see. Next up, I got a Doodlebug yarn order, which I still have the deal going on with Doodlebug yarns. If you go to doodlebugyarn.com and use the coupon code RETROLEMON, all one word, you get $5 off a $25 or more purchase. And I know I haven't mentioned it in a little while, but that offer still stands. And if you're watching from the website, there's a little widget to this side of me where it's a direct link. And it even reminds you what the coupon code is. Awesome. So I got a Doodlebug Yard Wonder, and I got Malabrigo Rios in the Teal Feather. Now, okay, anybody who's been using Malabrigo for a while knows they have the most inconsistent dye lots ever. So the one pictured on the website was more bright. So this ended up being a little darker than what I was expecting. So I don't know that it'll work what, for what I wanted it for. But it's still a very lovely shade of like teal. But it's just not, it's darker. I was expecting a little more brighter. So that's it for my yarny goodness. I just have two, but I have some tools of the trade. Because in my Doodlebug yarn order, I got some Haya Haya Bent Tip Needles. Because I lost my favorite Bent Tip Needle, which was from Knit Picks. And I thought, well, since I'm ordering from Doodlebug Yarns and I was placing a $25 order, I could get some Haya Haya ones. And they come in colors. Now these ones are um, bigger than my Knit Picks ones. So I will try these out and see how I like these ones. But I like bent tip needles better than straights myself. And then I got, I'm so excited about these. I'll try to take one out of the pack. I ordered two. I ordered kitty snips. I love these. I don't know. Because they've had puppy snips out for a while. And okay, while I love my dogs, I'm a cat person. I love my cat. My cat's my baby. And he acts like it. Big baby. So anyone who hasn't seen Puppy or Kitty Snips, they're little scissors and you pinch the legs. Ah! So cute. Now I wanted green and red. I really want a red pair. But they only had, out of the shipment that Haya Haya sent, because they are by Haya Haya, they're Haya Haya Kitty Snips. Um, they only got green and blue. So I did get a green set. Because I wanted green and red. And I got a blue set. Blue. So if someone ever finds red ones, let me know. So I want one in my um, Knitting's Notion pouch that I keep with me in my knitting bag. And I want one to keep with my spinning wheel. That's why I want a red pair. Red one to go with my ladybug. 
And I figure that way I can just have it hanging there. And they'd be perfect little snips for when I need to snip my yarn. And the last tool of the trade, I happened to catch when they updated the Ravelry bags. I'm so excited. This was the design I voted for. I love this design. I think it's cute. I think it captures the essence of Ravelry and the colors are very me. The black, the green, pink, made out of organic cotton. Now, I don't know if anyone else knows this, but if you went and the first batch of bags they got in, you got the alert and you missed out on them, you won't get any future alerts. You have to go back in, click on this bag, and click and check the notify me box again. Just so you know. So this was on a Friday morning. The Friday morning I went to the orthopedic um, specialist and I happened to get an email like early in the morning that they got more in. So there were like 800 bags when I ordered mine and shortly after that they were gone. So my Ravelry bag. Okay, um, moving on to spinning. Um, the first thing I spun up was my um, Greenwood Fiber Arts um, Metro colorway. It is 100% pole worth and this was shipment two of the club. And this was gorgeous. I will try to insert a picture here. And it was gray, white, this slate blue, and bright lime green. And I'm curious. Let me know if you like the picture being inserted. It was a recommendation from a viewer. Because especially people who are non-spinners, or if it's something that I got a while ago and didn't spin really quick, you know, just a reminder of what it looked like first. Let's see. Kind of spread out. I love spinning this. I have found... I love Polworth. I love it a lot. And this, this is just gorgeous. It is really bright in person. The green is just so limey. So that's that. I got... I think it was like 160. 60 yards, and it is a worsted weight. Next, I have, it is Into the World, um, Corydale, in the Walla Walla colorway, and I'll put a picture here. And it is gorgeous. Now, um, a viewer, Suzanne, who is Ami, yes I am, um, had seen me talk about when I got the fiber, because I just showed the fiber a week or two ago, and she was like, oh, you know, if you'd like to see how it spins, check out mine. Well, hers was gorgeous, and I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do next, because this was my last entry for Tour de Fleece, and I hit my one pound goal. I spun like crazy, because between my ladybug parts coming after Tour de Fleece started, and having um, a week off of spinning, or almost a week off of spinning, because of my injury, I kind of had gotten behind. So I spun this pretty quick. So. And I love it. Love the colors. Deep bluish greens. Like, it's like a deep tealish blue. Burgundy yellow some apple green, sky blue, it is just lovely. I love it and it is a worsted weight and I think I got about 130 yards. I have nothing on the bobbins at the moment. I haven't spun in a couple days because I've been so busy. I've been on the go, craziness, um, it is the end of July, um, Christmas is in five months and I'm thinking shoot trying to think of like holiday knitting and then it's back to school time so we've had to go school supply shopping all that craziness crazy 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 
So I have nothing on the bobbins right now, but I do have a little bit of fiber goodness. I got, loop. <laughs> I love me some loop. I got this, it was my first day of physical therapy, and it kind of kicked my butt a little because I was pretty sore afterwards. It went well, but I was sore. And I saw this, and it is called Perfect Day. It is Merino, Bamboo, and Angelina. It is 4.4 ounces. And it is, I'll try to tuck the little thing in. It goes from like an orange, to a yellow, to a green, to a blue. And it is stunning. It reminds me of when the sun comes up in the morning. It is gorgeous. I don't know what, it, I would like to spin this thin and make like a scarf out of it, I'm thinking. It's not a very big bump, being only 4.4 ounces, so I don't know that I could get a shawl out of it, but I'm thinking a scarf would be awesome. So, that's my loop. I know you see lots of loops, I apologize. Not really, because I love loop, and Steph of loop is one of the sweetest people ever that I've had the pleasure of coming into. And then next is the third and final shipment of the Greenwood Fiberworks um, Club. So if you haven't got yours and you don't want to be spoiled, look away. <laughs> it is called Exhilaration. And it is these plummy purples, lime greens, bright oranges, and bright lemony yellows. Love, love it. And it is on Polworth because that's the club choice that I picked. I love her Polworth. Her prep is amazing. Her colors are so vibrant. And they don't bleed. When you wash it and stuff before you thwack it, I've never had a problem with her colors bleeding. They stay this bright. Um, the green and like gray one that I just showed you is also Greenwood Fiberworks. Phenomenal. I cannot say enough great things about her. And she is the next dyer for the completely tw twisted and arbitrary group. Let's see, let's show you this side too. This side has a little more of the plum. And then all of her club colorways she is planning on releasing to the public, which I think is great. Because I always think it's a bummer when I either can't make it into the club, I don't have enough money, or I've missed it, I missed sign-ups or whatever, and they're like club-exclusive colorways. I'm like, that stinks. As a consumer, I'm like, that stinks. Because I would totally buy certain things on the spot, and so I'm glad she's doing that. I'm all for that. I love this. I love, love her stuff. I'm loving Polworth big time. It might be one of my favorites. So she has a shop. She usually has her um, shop well stocked. It is um, greenwoodfiberworks.etsy.com and as always I will link everything that I've shown you today. So in the show notes. The show notes are on the website because I do know I have viewers that do not watch or are not part of Ravelry, so I don't want to put them just in the Ravelry group because I want everyone to be able to find them. So the website is RetroLemonStudio.com and everything's posted, links there, you can watch the show from there in case if you're on iTunes, you know. So that's it for me this week. I don't think this one went too long. They've been a little shorter lately, um, just because it's summer. There's so much going on. And I know that, you know, a lot of you have a lot going on and don't have a full hour as well. So, um, hopefully you have enjoyed this week's episode. I'm so excited to keep the knit-along items coming in, please. I love seeing all the ways that you decide to dress up your little critters and... Um, yarn choices and it's so much fun I love seeing it and you can win great prizes so like I said thank you to everybody who has donated prizes um, thank you for watching new and returning viewers um, I have so much fun doing this and I appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with me so until next week I'm Jenna 
also known as Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, and Pinterest, and I will see you next week. Bye.